On this episode of Tough Grit, we'll span the ages through this week's rule challenges. Our contestants will begin in modern times, where gates open at the touch of a button. Then we'll harken back to the early cattle herding days of barbed wire and branding, to a time not so different from today, where mending a fence was a necessary but demanding chore. Join us as our challenges take us through time and this week's Tough Grit. brought a hammer. Shannon, as, as always, I'm afraid to ask, but I will anyways. What on earth do you got going on out here? Well, hello, Caleb, my young friend. Uh, I'm fixing my friend Tom's fence. It uh, got broken. Okay, you, uh, you need a little help there? Oh. <laughs> Caleb, I'm not just another pretty face. I think I can handle mending barbed wire. <laughs> okay, but just that you've never been too, too good with tools. Oh, well, Caleb. I mean, this is bending barbed wire. How hard can it be, huh? It's just a twist here, a bend there, and voila, your fence is fixed. Ah! Ah, congratulations, ah. man. I'd shake your hand right now, but it looks like you're, uh, you're a little tied up. Help me out of this, would you? I don't want to chew through another good shirt. Ah! Now, maybe you've had to mend a fence really quickly before your friend finds out how you broke it. Or, I mean, before your cattle or your sheep can get out of your pasture. Or maybe you've suffered the loss of livestock because your animals have gotten out of damaged fencing or predators have gotten in. Or you've been caught in a downpour, getting in and out of your pickup to open and shut those gates. Maintaining your gates and fences can be a chore that can leave you feeling like you're in a big pile of, well, tough grit. Well, that's where we come in. I'm Shannon Riley. And I'm Caleb Regan. Today, we're not only going to show you how to complete the project successfully, we'll give you the tools and techniques to help you get it done right the first time. And we're going to throw in a little neighborly competition, just to make the time fly. Let's meet today's contestants. Our first contestant is Jeff Droz from Rich Hill, Missouri. Jeff has 25 acres and pretty much lives off the grid, except for his internet. He's married, grows berries, makes wine, and does pecan grafting. He's also learned the benefit of horsepower, real horsepower, from his Amish and Mennonite friends. Jeff should have no problem with our fencing challenge. In fact, he's the one who taught me that it's called barbed wire because it's barbed, not because it was invented by some lady named Barb. Who knew? Also joining us from the Rich Hill, Missouri area is Jeff's lifelong friend, Mark Bell. Mark is married with three kids. He lives on the cattle ranch he grew up on and works with his dad. He holds a degree in agricultural science and teaches vocational classes like woodworking and metal shop. Mark obviously has a lot of experience working with livestock, but still, I wish he'd quit offering me a salt lick. Welcome to Tough Grit, gentlemen. Ready yourselves, because your project today bridges the gap between our high-tech present and our rugged past. Your Tough Grit challenge today is... Installing a solar-powered automatic gate opener and mending a wire fence. If you live on a small piece of land, you've probably got some fences. In all likelihood, you have more than one. Whether you're moving heavy equipment between pastures or maybe just commuting to work every day, an automatic gate opener can save you a lot of time and legwork. Of course, a gate might not be the only opening in your fence. Sometimes a gap in a fence, either a snapped or sagging wire, or a resulting loose post can be a real hazard for your livestock. We'll show you some basic mending skills to solve those common problems. Installing fancy automatic gate openers or mending barbed wire may sound tough, but we brought experts in from Grip Magazine and Tractor Supply to give you a hand. For Team Grit, as always, we have the ever-helpful Editor-in-Chief of Grit Magazine, Hank Will. Hank really knows all about how to alter time. In fact, it's been said his face could stop a clock. And for Team Tractor Supply, we have Michael Stringer, District Manager from the state of Kentucky. Welcome. Michael knows all about time travel. He makes time fly every morning when he throws his alarm clock across the room. Our experts will help you complete your projects, sticking with our three criteria of efficiency, accuracy, and safety. Whichever one of you does the best job will walk away with up to a $1,000 gift card to Tractor Supply Company. And if you can install one of those automatic solar-powered openers on a case of beer, I'll be your friend for life. Or at least until the beer runs out. <laughs> 
You'll also be using some great equipment on today's project, like the Mighty Mule 350 dual gate opener, some five watt solar panels, gridded crimping sleeves, wire cutters, wire stretchers, and lineman's pliers, and safety equipment like gloves and eye protection. Before we take off into our first challenge, let's hear from our experts about, well, what to expect. Jeff, when you're working with swinging gates like these, you, you want to mount the, the motor part of the uh, opener on the same post that the gates are hinged on. And basically, you want to mount it so that it'll actually use a pulling motion to open and a pushing motion to close the gate. This is a, the actuator that we'll be installing today. One of the uh, sort of keys to the, to the entire installation is being sure that you've got an actuator that's sized to the size of the gate. The bigger the gate, the stronger the actuator needs to be. Mark, today we're going to be installing two of these units on the uh, gate openers, and it's, they're going to be wired to the receiver and to a battery source that's going to give its power. Now, the big important thing in the contest today is to make sure that we're mounting these on good posts, that they're plumb, that they're mounted well and sturdy, because if the post fails, everything we've done today we're going to have to redo. Jeff, you want to make sure that the gate will swing freely and easily. You want to be sure that there aren't any impediments to the swing, any bumps. You might, you might need to level the ground a little bit to get it right. Should you oil or grease the hinges? Yeah, definitely you want to do that. And uh, you want to definitely be sure that, that the gate won't bump or drag or it will trick the actuator into thinking that there's something trapped under the gate and it'll cause it to shut down. If you're going to mount your gate far from the house, Mark, you want to make sure that you be sensitive to the environment. And a great option is using solar power. Do these need to be mounted on anything special? Well, what's great with the Mighty Mule system is it brings all the hardware you need to mount it on any wood post that you've got available. You want to choose a post that's near the control unit that's in full sun year round. The more sun that those panels are exposed to, the more electricity they'll generate. We'll go ahead and store the extra electricity in a 12 volt battery on the ground. That way the gates will operate on cloudy days like today or at night with no problem. For our first challenge today, our two contestants are going to finish the installation of the automatic openers. We've already dug trench and ran wires through the conduit, so now all they got to do is mount the openers to the brackets, do a little wiring, and power it up. Remember, when you're at home, this is the type of project you'd like to take your time with. But for the sake of television and fun, we're going to make it into a little bit of a race. So when they're done, we're going to press that button. And if both gates swing close, then whoever finished first is a winner of our first competition. However, if neither gate swings closed, well then we're going to check and see who got their wires crossed. Good luck, gentlemen. Ready, Ready set, set, go. go. Wow. Hold that. We'll swing around the other side. All right, that's a 9 16 All right, I got the wrench in my pocket. Okay, cool. Well, let's not tighten it all the way because we may have to have some horizontal or vertical adjustment we gotta make. Okay, Mark, that's it. Go ahead and start tightening up your nuts. The crescent's gonna catch the, the bracket and should hold it. Jeff's got his first bolt all the way through, nut tight. Why don't you push back the first bolt so it gets, gets it out of your way, and then, and then that'll it. give you some room to catch some traction on that first one, and you only have to fight with the second one. Yeah, be careful you don't lose your knuckles on that thing. We're gonna take a break, but don't you take a time out. We'll be right back on Tough Grit. Fixing fence is a great excuse to get out and walk or ride your land. I like to begin with the perimeter fences for the simple reason that those barriers keep my critters in and my neighbor's mongrel bull out. The first things I look for are any broken wires or wires supporting newly fallen tree limbs. If there's a wire down due to a fresh tree fall, I'll do what I need to do to remove it. When I'm short on time, I'll sight down long stretches of fencing and look for any posts that are akimbo that weren't akimbo before. When your posts are as old as mine are, it's not unusual to find some freshly broken off. Thanks to an overzealous attempt by a cow to grab some tender morsels of grass on the other side of the fence. Yes, the grass is always greener and more delicious, just out of reach. If the fence isn't physically down, I'll hold off replacing posts until I have plenty of time. If the fence is on the ground, well, then when I have plenty of time is right now. Walking fences is a great way to get a little fresh air, do something useful, and keep your animals secure at the same time. And if all that invigoration doesn't make you sleep better at night, the peace of mind surely will. Welcome back to Tough Grit, where our two teams are working hard to install an automatic gate opener to make one rancher's life a little bit more streamlined and refined. Good job, good chain. Both contestants are just trying to get their nuts tight. Yeah, I wouldn't make it too tight, so we can, oh, so we can track it. Sure. All right, Jeff got his first piece of hardware installed. There you go, Mark. Keep your eye on the prize. 
Okay. Mark's got his first bit of hardware installed. Cool. Okay. All right, so we got to close the gate. He's got his actuator up now, just measuring point to the pipe gate. You want to keep the straight edge going back towards the actuator, just like you've got it. Let's see. Let's just measure it. Let's measure it before we tighten it. Okay. Got to make a small adjustment. Got make that actuator fit. This one? That way? Okay. Hold up. Hmm, that's 12 inches here. Yeah, we got some adjustment here too that we can make. So, uh, from let's see. pin to pin, be within 12 inches, so you're not going to have any bindings. Right back in here in the bracket, you've got two different positions where you can alter that. There you go and gain your adjustment. Are we in range? Perfect. Oh, I'm doing good. Both of them getting a little nutty. How'd I do that before? Mark's back in the mouth a little bit to fine tune, make an adjustment. Uh -huh. you grab two flat sides this way. Mm. Okay, there you go. And yeah, then gotcha, you, gotcha. you just need enough grip so it'll tighten. It's coming yeah. down to the final bolt. They're bolting to the end. Yeah. There we go. Here's this wrench. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Jeff, moving on to the wiring part of it. Okay. All right. So it's all color coordinated. Yep. Just kind of snake it up. All right. You want to kind of you want to run it through one of these grooves here. All right. There, right. Black, red. Keep in mind they are color coded. That's it. Loosening up the screws so that the wires will go in easily. It's nice they soldered the ends on those. Good job with the screwdriver. You've done this before. That's how I lost all my hair. Stab the screwdriver back in the top and, and then we're done. Yay! And here we go. We're almost done. That's that. Done. And now for the exciting conclusion. Will the gates close? Caleb, you've been pushing my buttons for months. Why don't you do the honors? I hope this works more than you do. All right. Congratulations. All right. Great Good job. job. Gentlemen, come, come on, on in. in. That was a great competition. Uh, Caleb, what'd you think? Well, both of you guys did a good job. This one, a lot of it came down to hardware installation and dexterity with the wrenches, but Jeff, you finished a minute and a half quicker. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, Jeff. You win a $500 gift card from Tractor Supply Company. What do you owe your victory to? Speed and agility and a good sidekick. Oh, that's the first time Hank's ever heard that. Well, <laughs> Mark, you didn't win, but you had a great hand with Michael. I, I'm betting on the M&M team. What do you think? We're going to redouble our efforts and come back in the second half. All right, that'll be sweet. Well, so far, our contestants have journeyed into the future for the convenience of the solar-powered gate opener. But now we're going to travel back to the rustic wild, wild west, where we use things like barbed wire. Sharp, sharp barbed wire. Ow! You still use stuff like that? Yeah, we sure do. Along with a lot of other useful tools and equipment that our tough grit experts will talk to us about after these messages. Welcome back to Tough Grit. Now it's time for our two contestants, Jeff and Mark, to learn about their second challenge, fence repair. Here's Hank and Michael to explain. Jeff, two repairs you're likely to encounter with a fence are uh, broken wires, which you'd rejoin or splice, and wires that are kind of down, they're, they're worked off the posts. Uh, in general, you know, when wires rust, they become weak and they can break. Don't animals often cause problems as well? Yeah, you know, animals, especially when they're reaching through the fence to get to that good greener grass on the other side, uh, they'll push on those wires, they'll, they'll cause them to break and knock the wires down. Mark, it's a good idea to have an extra roll of fence available, and you're gonna need a few tools today. Good pair of pliers, gloves, some splicers, even some staples and a hammer. That's gonna make the job a whole lot easier and make it work for years out here repairing fencing. There are several ways to join uh, broken wires making the splice, if you will. Uh, one of the sort of easiest ways that you can work at it out in the field is to, to take and, and twist an extra section of wire kind of into the existing brake. Uh, it's a little bit harder to get it tight, and that particular fix isn't quite as good as using something that we call a sleeve crimp. The sleeve crimp requires a, a, a special tool and a, and a small piece of tubular steel, which I've already inserted it in the crimper. Basically what you do is you use a, a, a wire tightener insert both ends of the wire through the crimp, and then just squeeze down tight. Do that a couple of times, and you'll see that the, the pinched metal will pinch the two wires together, 
Mark, slack wires can be fixed a couple of different ways. One, if the run goes all the way back to the corner or to a solid post, we can pull the wire, wrap it around, and you can put some staples back in. And That's kind of a temporary fix though, right? You know, it is. And right now, the best thing you can do is take the steps to make it right. And I'd recommend getting your fence stretcher out and let's cut out some wire and let's put in a splice and make this more permanent. The wire stretcher is useful for both tightening a, a slack wire or pulling two ends of, of a broken wire together so that you can actually uh, splice them. If you look at it, you've got a, really what looks like a hook at either end. You can use that hook to attach the device to a post and then you can use this clamp to clamp it to a wire and then basically like a jack, you ratchet the wire tight and you can re uh, attach it at the post, or if a wire is broken, you basically attach the clamps to the two sides. Imagine that there was a break here. You'd use the jacking action to pull them together, and then you could work on the splice right in the middle. You've got the good tension going, and once you release it, you've got a nice tight fix. Here we go with our second challenge. Our contestants will have to fix their line of fence. They'll have to repair two brakes and one sag. <laughs> what a coincidence. If I don't get two brakes, my butt really begins to sag. They'll mend one brake with two twisted loops, and the second one by crimping. Then reattach a sag to the post. The first one done, make their mends, retention, will win the second challenge. Good luck, guys. Ready, Ready set, set, go. Put your seatbelts on. Got it out. What I imagine this will come down to is first finding the brakes in weak areas, then getting to work demonstrating the expertise with the fencing tools. And I'm really excited to watch this part of the challenge. You see, I was on my college fencing team. Marks down to his first break using that wire stretcher. Hank and Jeff have made it to their first break. I remember my first break. I had a Coke and a Twinkie. Oh, it was so good. Who will be the first fella to fix a faulty fence? And who will face a fencing fail? F -f Find out as we continue on Tough Grit. While repairing a fence quickly may be important, there are right ways and wrong ways to go about it. Staying on top of broken wire repairs is critical. Let's say you've got four unbroken strands of wire left, so you just ignore it, but then when the next one breaks, you got a really big hole in the fence. Each time a wire breaks, the chance goes up that one of your animals might try to get through the fence. Also, the loose ends of broken bob wire can be dangerous. Splicing isn't as big of a chore as it sounds. It's a lot faster and easier than restraining a new wire or chasing your animals out of someone else's bean patch. First, slack wires can allow an animal to get through your fence, or worse, allow them enough leeway to get tangled up. Second, most wire fences, whether they're barbed wire, high tensile or woven wire depend on tension to keep everything together. Loose wire can get worked off a post more easily and post with more tension on one side or the other can become crooked. To get the most out of your fence, try not to get strung out. Keeping the lines tensioned and in good repair will save you time, effort, and worry. Welcome back to Tough Grit. Our two contestants are finishing up their fence repairs and will soon be judged on proper wire tensioning. And Caleb knows about tension. We've been working together for months now. Marks down to his first break. Pull some of the slack out as you can. There you go. Jeff, using the twisted loop method. Ben went in a, in a pretty tight loop and then twist it over. So the next step is to, to fish this end through. Give yourself about the same amount of space. Build this same structure so that they're locked together. There you go. Go ahead and, and grab this end, and we'll go ahead and we'll, we're going to clamp it. We'll crimp in place. Is it going to hold? Let's find out. Be careful letting it off. Nice fix right there. On to the second one. Job well done. Got it. Seat belt. First create one loop, and then pull the other one through, create another loop. Mark's located the second break. All right, go ahead and twist her up. Mark with the wire stretcher in place on the second break using the twisted loop method. Oh, oh it's created another break. Oh, right here, that's good. All right. It's always good when you have these kind of uh, unexpected breaks because you've identified a future weakness and we're going to fix it at one time instead of twice. See if you can get that right about in the middle. 
Yep, now just, just haul on it. All the way down. See if you can get it. Yep. Clunk. Sagging. Sweet. Sweet. Okay, where's our sagging wire? Good job, Mark. Good job. It's right here. Down there on the bottom, Mark. Come on up here. Right in here, guys. That was a great challenge. Uh, so, Caleb, who won? I got to give this one to Mark and Team Tractor Supply. They finished in a quicker time. Pretty impressive considering you had a rusted strand that busted on you, so you made an extra repair. Jeff and Team Grit, you guys were just missing a staple on your last heads post. Congratulations, Mark. You win the second challenge. Congratulations, Mark. You win a $500 gift card from Tractor Supply. I knew you could do it, buddy. Great job. And Jeff, you also won a $500 gift card from the earlier competition. Congratulations. Thank you. And if you're not stuck in the past and would like to be on a future episode of our Rural American Challenge, here's how you can be a contestant on Tough Grit. To sign up, go to toughgrit.com and click on the I can do that button or look for the advertisement in Grit Magazine. Don't wait, sign up today. So now you know almost everything you need to know about installing automated gate openers and mending your fences. And if you'd like to learn more, visit toughgrit.com. Glad you could join us. Hope to see you next time. Shannon, you been uh, fixing some fence again? How'd you know? Just a wild guess. I'm Caleb Regan. And I'm Shannon Riley. And if you see us coming, you know you're in Tough, Tough Grit. Grit. On next week's episode, it's a real case of puppy love. We meet two contestants ready to take on the challenges of canine health care. They will tackle everything from providing appropriate shelter and exercise to preventative medicine. We're sniffing up a couple of great challenges for a dog beat dog competition. And we'll learn all about how to keep our fabulous furry friends' tails a wagon. On next week's episode of Tough Grit.